Yasu, I'm Michael Angelakis and welcome to Out of the Blue. G'day, I'm Michael Keelan. We've been following Matthew Flinders as he charted his way around the southern coast of Australia. Today, we're going to find out why he thought there was a strait of water that went from the southern coast right up through the continent to the Gulf of Carpentaria. We're also going to jump on board a prawn boat, show you how to catch and cook prawn. Also, we're going to be special guests at a prawn vest. And if you like our previous dishes, we've got more in store for you. They're easy and they taste yummy. So come with us as we go searching for those wonderful things that come from out of the blue. Matthew Flinders and his good friend George Bass had discovered a strait of water between Australia and Tasmania some years earlier and called it Bass Strait. Ever since then, Flinders had entertained the thought that there might also be a strait of water separating Australia into two very large islands. So when he sailed east out of Port Lincoln and found no land ahead and a great expanse of water running to the north, he must have thought that this was the great strait he was looking for. A tide from the northeastward, apparently the ebb, ran more than one mile an hour. No land could be seen in the direction from whence it came. And these circumstances, with the trending of the coast to the north, did not fail to excite many conjectures. Large rivers, deep inlets, inland seas, and passages into the Gulf of Carpentaria were terms frequently used in our conversations of this evening. And the prospect of making an interesting discovery seems to have infused new life and vigor into every man in the ship. Matthew Flinders, 20th of February, 1802. But alas, it was only a gulf, a very big gulf, but a gulf all the same. He called it Spencer's Gulf after the respectable nobleman who presided at the Board of Admiralty when the voyage was planned. Today, the pristine waters of Spencer's Gulf are one of the very few places in the world you'll find the famous Western King Prawn. To get a first-hand account on prawn farming, as they call it, we're heading out on the prawn trawler Kylette, operated by brothers Jim and Jack Waller from Wallaroo. And haven't we picked a balmy night to be out? It's a warm summer's evening and the gulf is calm and tranquil. We're heading due north up Spencer's Gulf, exactly the same course as Matthew Finders took 200 years ago. I wonder if he enjoyed a night like this. So it's just, just getting a dark, Michael, and uh, this is pretty exciting stuff, isn't it? It is. The stars are out. And we're here. And we're here. Western king prawns only come out of their sandy burrows at night to feed in the relative safety of darkness. And it has to be in near total darkness for them to venture out. Even a full moon will keep the prawns snug in the sand for the night. This means Jim and Jack can only head out on nights when there's little or no moon. To catch prawns, you have to drag the bottom, and out here, it's a long way down. These heavy steel doors drag the net along the bottom, scooping the prawns into the back of the net. Jack uses his latest navigational computers to tell him where the best places are to trawl. After about 15 minutes of trawling at slow speed, the nets are hauled in. Prawns are not the only creatures scooped up in the net. While these blue crabs are a good catch, Jim and Jack are only licensed to take prawns, and the blue crabs are thrown back for the crab boats. A sustainable fishing industry is important to the people of South Australia. Stocks must be allowed time to replenish themselves. Overfishing simply means there's nothing left for tomorrow. Tonight is the first night of the summer season and it's survey time. This is Jim and Jack's first opportunity to see what this year's crop is going to be like. Right. 43, 45, 
All the prawns are weighed and measured. Their sex is also determined. The females are often returned to the ocean to keep the stocks up for next season. The dolphins are enjoying a wonderful evening snack, swimming next to the discard chute. It beats chasing fish for dinner. Here it just falls into their mouth as they leisurely swim alongside the slow-moving prawn trawler. They really are beautiful creatures, and on a magnificent summer night like this, it's very calming to sit back and watch the dolphins swimming next to us. While we've been relaxing with the dolphins, the crew have been hard at it. Once the prawns have been separated into various sizes, they are then cooked in boiling water for 10 minutes. As soon as they come out, they are instantly cooled to stop the cooking process. Prawns are then weighed, packaged and frozen, ready for sale. Now that's what I call efficient. By midnight, everyone has worked up an appetite, so Michael and I are collecting a midnight snack from the catch. This is the only way to go shopping for seafood. It doesn't come any fresher than this. And we've been prawn fishing all night, and we're going to show you how to iron prawn. Put, unbelievable. We'll put a little bit more. We've got some Mount uh, Gambia butter. We'll just a little bit, bit more butter in the pan. There we are. Now, this is a sort of a spill-proof safety galley rack. It is, and, 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 a can't lift the and, 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 just, and just a little <laughs> bit of oil we'll put in there. What sort of oil are you using, Michael? We're using uh, peanut oil, just, mm -hmm. just, and then we're going to add in some uh, spring onions mm -hmm. into that. Also, I've got some lovely fresh uh, shallots. It's a cosy galley, isn't it? It's a very cosy <laughs> galley. <laughs> and and we've got some uh, fennel. Fresh fennel. And we're just going to soften that fennel because perno and fennel are competent, and that's why we use mainly butter and a little bit of oil so the butter won't brown. So the perno is for us, is it? The perno is definitely for us. Mm. Look at that. So, and you can smell all those flavours, mm, and um, can. and all we're going to do to that in, in about a couple of minutes is add the prawns and a bit of pepper and salt. And when the prawns about three quarters cooked, mm -hmm. we'll add the perno and a touch of uh, macaravar while that lovely tapestry riesling. Because it's about midnight, and uh, we're in the middle of the Gulf, and just as we're doing this. They're actually pulling in all these magnificent prawns, Absolutely. and it really is quite exciting because uh, to see. The, the way that they harvest the prawns and fish the prawns, very eco-friendly, it's a, it's a wonderful industry. About a half an hour to the water, they're packed and sorted, and then they're in the hold. So sent, and sent all over the world, And all over amazing. the world. So we just had these prawns, these uncooked king prawns, and as they cook, they will release all their flavours, so we'll get the juice of the prawns, and if we just mix up all mm. those ingredients with them, and uh, I'll squeeze over just a, a touch of... Uh, a little bit of salt and uh, some pepper, black cracked pepper. Now, Michael, they are almost cooked. About another minute to go, Michael, so we'll just give them a decent uh, splash <laughs> of, um, of perno. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Have a look at that. Just a little bit of perno, and if you oh. want to soften the perno, Michael, mm -hmm. we'll put in some uh, uh, tapestry riesling. Just a little. Oh, look at that. Lovely Riesling. Just sort of bubble away a bit. And then um, we'll just plate it up and away you go. And thicken it off for about, um, yeah, about another minute. And you can see all those flavours. It's so simple. It was butter, shallots, spring onions, dill, perno, white wine, and just a dash of oil. And uh, that's how simple it is. Voila. Voila. Should I, should I, I try one? I think you're allowed to have one, Michael. I mean, fresh prawns. Fresh prawns. Straight out of the sea, into the pot, a little bit of perno, and, and, and one will disappear very quickly now. Mm. Can't, can't get a fish mm. than that, can you?
While Jack looks for greener pastures on his radar, we're in the ship's galley cooking up all the super fresh seafood for our hard-working crew. Well, Michael, it's not too bad. It's past midnight. We had those wonderful prawns and puno. We passed them around the crew. I did. I did. Did the skipper get one first? He got one. Along with the skipper. They're going to put some prawns in it on the deck, so... I know. Now, when, but when they come in, it would be terrific to have a wonderful bowl of soup. Right. Well, so we do that uh, bouillabaisse? Well, I reckon. The, the longest thing about making a bouillabaisse is the stock. The stock takes one hour. And that's all it takes. So that's been boiling away, Mark. So if you take off the lid, the most important thing when you're doing your bouillon base is to add uh, the shellfish that's going to take the longest to cook. So these are all these crabs that we prepared earlier. So we put all these blues from the crabs in that stock. And what happens is we bring it back to the boil. And this will probably take about, uh, maybe put a couple more in because we've got, uh, we've got scallops to put in, bugs. We'll put in the fish. Here's that lovely little calamari that we are that we cleaned earlier, and all, all I did was use the whole... <laughs> lift the eyes in. It's cute. It's very... <laughs> there we are. That baby calamari. Ah. See, all this will take about two more minutes, Michael, and all those prawns that we shelled earlier, yeah. and we'll give it a good mix-up okay. to combine it all. What a midnight snack. Oh, something smells all right in here. <laughs> now this is the skipper's bowl and the first mates. Right, the skipper gets the white bowl. <laughs> Have a look at that big. The skipper gets the crab. Oh, We're gonna get the crab. Oh, the skipper oh, adds some calamari. Dooly. And uh, he's allowed it. We'll put the. Uh, he got the one with the eye. And we're going to give him some prawns. <laughs> oh, look at that. This one with the eye. Yeah. And we're going to give him some stock. All right. And. Um, uh, I hope. Sensational, isn't it? Put in some crab for the first mate. He can get a crab as well. Oh, And uh, oh. he can get some prawns. <laughs> and. Uh, oh, that looks yummy, doesn't it? And, and where, where are the prawns? The prawns are there. Yep. So there's the first mate. And one more prawn. There we okay. are. There we are. Captain Jim. There we are. Oh, and first mate Craig. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, right, now Craig guys, uh, do you like the same? Yes, please. Oh, yeah. It's after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. James, he'll, he'll love it. This is James. Oh, yeah. James had to cook those prawns yeah, for us. He did. He, 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 picked them out. he picked out the big That's ones. That's James. Anyway, guys. Cheers. You, and James, you got the biggest prawn now, son. Yeah, you it's all yours. Bon Thanks appetit. So, can this happen every night? Can we organise <laughs> Well, I'm not too sure about that. It's spot on. Now, Michael, there's a nice big one for Paul Jack's up there okay. steering the boat. OK, here we go. Well, it's a big stair job, but I'll do it. Here's your soup. Oh, beautiful. Full bays a la Wallaroo. And I suppose you want the spoon. Hang on, where is it? It's got the hanky in here. Where is it? There. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Yeah, I will. You help catch it, so you may as well uh, help eat it. It's absolutely superb. It certainly is. You're Another a good success cook. story. No, no, I you're a good cook, Michael. No, no, no. All I did was. Well, I didn't do much. Uh, no, no, no. That didn't much at all. <laughs> In fact, I'm going down to have mine now. Enjoy. Uh, right, right. Thank you. Absolutely. The next morning as we return to port at Wallaroo, a giant grain tanker is manoeuvred into place to fill up with cereal crops that are grown in this region. This year has been a record season and small rural towns like Wallaroo 
have prospered from the extra income generated from the huge export sales of wheat and barley. But today we're heading into shore for a different celebration at Wallaroo, the annual prawn festival. Every year, people gather at Wallaroo to celebrate the superb seafood this region is famous for. And Michael and I are today's special guests. Whenever you marinate seafood, irrespective of the marinade, whether it's an Asian marinade or Mediterranean marinade, whether it's shell on, shell off, always for one hour maximum. Seafood absorbs all that. After the marinade, let them drain and then cook it. So you can actually marinate these prawns whole. They look fantastic. Just split open the back like I've done. They'll absorb the marinade and uh, then just barbecue them, or we can actually stir fry them in a wok too. With the head on as well. It keeps all the flavour in too, so you can, any way you wish. You can smell the chilli, <laughs> and there's more. No? All right, the white wine. White wine. Right. Actually, we'll, put, we'll make a good dot this time. Well, there's no more. <laughs> oh. Let's heat him up a bit. <laughs> it's important to have the oil. Really hot. And then you can put in, we'll put in a good lot of prawns yep. this time because we've got lots of liquid. We'll just allow that to boil for a few minutes, Mickey. Right. And um, then we're ready. This is lethal. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh dear. There we are. Okay, even that guy, I reckon we can put another, another lot like that again, Mickey. We've got okay. plenty of prawns. Beautiful. You want to heat them up a bit? Put yeah, them just in. a few. Yeah, good handful. That should do it. Oh. Okay. Are you very lucky over that yeah. side? Woks are great because it, you've got a lot of cooking surface. <laughs> I try to keep a professional touch to all this, but obviously it degenerates very quickly. And my kids call me a social embarrassment. Only the, only the four of them, the others are okay about it. <laughs> So these won't Fantastic. take long. As you see, there's a lot more prawns oh, this time. Yeah, there's probably down about a bit. two kilos of headless prawns, and that'll probably be about four and a half kilos of prawns with the head on. Oh, we didn't put any crack that. Yep. And these won't take long. As you can see, how they start to sort of curl, and uh, you can really smell the garlic. And, and with this dish, you can actually serve it with boiled rice. You can actually get noodles, toss it in noodles, so just use your imagination. The most important thing is, is just use the flavours that are going to enhance the prawns and not take away those natural flavours. Oh, sorry, Michael. Uh, garlic is here. always best used fresh. You know, if you've got some old cloves lying around, they've started to go a bit mouldy, really throw them out and go and get some new. And slice it up around the top. Hey, hey. Uh, Rosemary. Hey, Rosemary, Michael. attention. Rosemary. Yeah. That's not Michael, Rosemary. There. You want to be in that corner there, Michael? I'll be yeah. in this corner. No, really. Angry crowd. There we are. Okay, that's. Oh, let's do another little bit. Okay. All right, another little bit. We've got more prawns. You want another hot batch? Maybe a, a little garlic? bit. No, chili garlic. Chili garlic. Chili garlic. Can you taste the garlic through them? Yeah. There we are. Dip them out in there like that. Big dollop. <laughs> Big. Make sure your partner has one if you have one. <laughs> we don't want any family squabbles. Again, that little bit of early oh, parsley in there, there just yeah, to gives it a little bit of bulk, a little bit of extra taste. So how are the garlic prawns and the chilli? All right, pretty good. <laughs> Keep cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run out soon. So you haven't had any there, there. Oh, no. Now, let I me... I don't even want to leave let, out the let, back door.
As a wonderful day draws to an end, it gives us a chance to reflect on the warm hospitality and the friendships we've made at the Wallaroo Prawn Festival and hope to return once again to discover all the wonderful things that come out of the blue.